Storytelling is one of the most powerful skills in the 21st century. And if you can master it, it's going to positively impact your personal life and your professional life. What's up guys? Absolutely incredible to have a new camera. Um, oh, I should probably put on a proper shirt. So this week's video is not just about storytelling in an abstract sense. I really want to get down into the science of storytelling because I always felt like storytelling was this God-given talent that you, know, you were just you just had or you didn't have. And you know, I've been reading a few books on storytelling, and I feel like anyone can be a better storyteller by learning some of the fundamentals of storytelling and really understanding this craft from a first principles perspective. So before we Continue. I really need to bring my dog in here. I think we need to go on a walk, buddy. Storytelling is one of the most powerful skills in the 21st century. And if you can master it, it's going to positively impact your personal life and your professional life. But it's, it's one of those abstract art forms that people don't really teach. Today I want to break it down in a very scientific way so that you can have a good grasp of the fundamentals so you can always fall back on these basic principles when you are exploring different platforms in today's multimedia world. You know, whether you're on Twitter or on YouTube or LinkedIn, um, or even writing a Slack message at work or, or a love letter, <laughs> I, I feel like there are a lot of these fundamental principles about storytelling that is rooted in, in scientific research that is actually really powerful to know. So, you know, today it might be YouTube, in the future it might be another platform, but these are the storytelling principles that will that I think will never change. So what is storytelling? At its core, storytelling is a way to communicate experiences, information, and ideas that engages the listener and reader emotionally or intellectually. You know, it used to be pretty simple when we were hunter-gatherers. We'd just say, hey, there's like a lion in that bush, or don't eat these berries. Um, they might kill you. And, and that was kind of the basic level of communication for a long time. But today, we have stories coming from our mobile phones, from our TVs and, and different formats and IG stories or podcasts, TikToks. But today, storytelling looks much more diverse. Assuming that you are a creator or an entrepreneur, someone who's trying to build their personal brand, I think storytelling is a super powerful tool and that's why I spent like eight plus hours researching the science of storytelling so you can use it in your own life. Look at this, this is not bad. This is the park that I go to every day. Um, I just wanna explain a bit about how I made this video about the science of storytelling. It would have taken a long, long time to actually do the research and get insights from really trustworthy sources. So um, I use perplexity for research. I think perplexity is a much better tool than GPT when it comes to research because it can actually link you to um, the original sources. So I use perplexity to kind of look for some of the best research on the science of storytelling. And then I plugged it into GPT to uh, touch up the copy, reformat it, and okay, also, look at that, that's my friends. That's my wife. That's my wife and that's my, my dog park friend, Albert. What's up, Albert? How's it going? How's it going? You're, You're in the on, vlog now. Be on TV. You're gonna be on porn. <laughs> I'm kidding. Our brains are wired for stories. One of the key differences between a human being and an animal is their, is their neocortex. The neocortex is a part of our brain that allows us to understand complex information like ideas, process language, and emotions. If story wasn't intrinsic like that, we would be passing down stories with 
data. The oldest living text is the Epic of Gilgamesh, not the spreadsheet of Gilgamesh's personal finances, right? There's this phenomenon called neural coupling. When a person tells you a story, you feel really connected with them. Why is that? Researchers at Princeton discovered that when they tell a story to another person, the listener's brain kind of synchronizes with the person telling the story. So stories are really powerful ways to create a shared understanding between people. Think about the flight attendant who just you know, does their job and tells you how to put on the life jacket versus the flight attendant who tells jokes and you know, makes a whole deal about it. It makes you engaged. So next time if you're doing a work presentation, and instead of just saying pieces of data like, you know, our sales went up by 20%, try a simple shift like saying, our team overcame these challenges and was able to grow the revenue by 10%, whatever it is. And that's that's going to land a little better. I feel like there are a lot of these uh, you know, talking head videos that, that teach you a subject, uh, but sometimes they, they get kind of boring. I mean, that's not really my style. So maybe I think I'm gonna do more uh, you know, educational content that's embedded in the vlogs. Another powerful thing about storytelling is when you're telling a story, there's this neurochemical response that happens and our brains release oxytocin. And you know, this was discovered by Dr. Dr. Paul Zak at Claremont University. When oxytocin is released, people experience empathy and you know, deep connection with the storyteller. So how can you use that as a creator and entrepreneur? When we create products and when we make a video, sometimes it's easy to think that you know, we're talking to thousands of people. And, and that's why customer avatars are really important because it grounds us in talking to one person. And when we do that, the, the quality of that storytelling improves. And it reminds me of something Sean Puri said uh, from My First Million, where you know he talks about talking to Jenny at her desk, who's actually someone in the middle of a workday who's pretty bored and is just like scrolling through YouTube, right? Next time you, you know, maybe make a video, think about talking to one person instead of thousands of people. This is kind of why in today's digital economy, People are not following companies, right? They're following people. So this is another reason why storytelling can be so powerful. It's an absolute riot over here. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh my God. Look at this. This is our life in a nutshell. Another really cool concept that I stumbled upon is called narrative transportation. This is a psychological concept that allows the storyteller to bring their audience into another world. When you're transported in that other world, there's this suspension of disbelief and you're more open to changing your beliefs and even changing your behaviors. You know, Steve Jobs famously said that the most powerful person in the room is a storyteller. He was also known to have this thing called the reality distortion field where when he was pitching your product or telling you an idea, like everything seemed like it was possible even if it was a very crazy, impossible idea. And so you can see why being a great storyteller can be used for inspiration or also manipulation. Very powerful tool that can be used for, for good or bad. Another really cool thing I discovered about storytelling is that you know it makes things super easy to remember. There's this term called schema theory. When you tell someone a story, it taps into this framework called schemas. And it's something that helps our brain process information more efficiently. It's as if the story is using these like familiar pathways to land in your brain and introduce new ideas. You know, it reminds me of this kind of bleak Stalin quote, which is that one death is a tragedy, but a million deaths is a statistic. And sadly, that's kind of how our brains process information sometimes. A picture of one child dying from starvation sometimes is more powerful than reading like that 5,000 people died uh, from starvation in a village on, in the Wall Street Journal, right? That's why stories are much more powerful than, than data if you want to you know, really create an impact with what you're saying. And I would like to caveat that data and storytelling is also extremely powerful, but we'll get to that at some point. I just wanna show you what my neighborhood looks like. It's actually a really lively street called the Visadero. And uh, you know, it's, it's not perfect, but I've had a lot of good memories here. I love it. The mills back there, my favorite coffee shop, and oh, definitely not going to that Popeyes again. 
So what makes stories more engaging? Of course, we have these things called story arcs. The researchers at University of Virginia looked at thousands of stories and you know, like rags to riches stories and tragedies, and they discovered something really interesting. And of course, these researchers discovered that clear structure within stories makes it easier for people to remember and makes the emotional impact stronger. And you know, there's of course there's story arcs for fiction, but in the business world and, and advertising, we see this used all the time. You know, another word for it is framework. For example, advertisers love using ADA, right? A-I-D-A, -A, attention, interest, desire, action, to persuade you know, a, a reader or, or a consumer to buy a product. You know, when you're writing an essay and you're trying to make an intriguing point, you know, you can use you know, the PAS framework, which is problem, amplify solution you know and in the beginning i found these frameworks kind of like constrictive because i was like oh i'm, I'm a creative person i don't want to tell a story using these frameworks but let me let me tell you about one story of how i was doing like a few job interviews every day and then i learned this tiny hack about how to tell my story when when the interviewer would ask oh so tell me about yourself in the beginning i would babble on and on talking about how I grew up in Hong Kong and this and that, and, and it was just so messy. But then I learned the framework called past, present, future. So when I would answer, I talk about something I did in the past that was relevant to the job. And then I talk about the present on what I was doing, which was also relevant to the job. And then I talk about what I was looking forward to in my next role. And of course, I, I tailored that answer to the job I was applying for. And once I implemented this framework of past, present, future, those job interviews always went so much better. Story arcs, frameworks, structure and storytelling. This is for me, especially a creative person with ADHD, it's a way to channel these disparate thoughts and, and be able to communicate it, not only clearly, but with impact. So just as a conclusion, we covered the science of storytelling today. And you know, we can probably go on and on and on and then I probably only cover the tip of the iceberg. But the main idea is that I just want to show you, you know, storytelling is not this God-given talent. You know, of course, there's always that friend or uncle who can capture an audience and tell a story that, that makes everyone laugh, that makes everyone emotional. But if you really break it down into a science, and if we start from there, then we can kind of learn techniques and things that fit your personality that will make you become a better storyteller. There, there's so much advice about how to write a good LinkedIn post, but really fundamentally like a carousel or a hook or all those, those tactical tips that talk about how to create great content on these platforms kind of all goes back to these fundamental principles of how our brains work and how we understand stories. So um, I hope this video helps. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to learn about storytelling. Yeah, I hope, I hope you had fun. I'm gonna make more of these videos. Um, I'm, I'm just at the beginning again, uh, but I have this theory that, you know, there's so many educational videos, like super nice lighting and you're in a studio. I, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm traveling all the time, but I still believe in, you know, educating and then sharing insights. And so the way I'm gonna do these videos is you're, you're probably just gonna go on an adventure with me, just kind of like this, like Casey Nye says, oh, that's why I've got these wide, these wide lenses. Um, so yeah, let's have fun. Have a beautiful day. This is my bedroom. This is a wall bed. Whew. That was, that was a good session. And also, yes, like I'm, maybe I'm teaching you about storytelling, but like, I just want you to know that there's a human being behind these videos and that human being is super damn thirsty and he's really hot because it is one of the hottest weeks in San Francisco right now. And I'm parched, the apartment is hot, and I need water. Okay, take care guys. Goodbye.